Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Faith Bridge family gathering. I've been looking forward to this one, particularly when we issued the survey, just to get a sense of everybody's pulse for coming back to church. Uh, an interesting thing happened when we issued the survey about 10 days ago. Uh, we were looking at some pretty bright, positive, bullish, optimistic notes, and we had every uh, hope of revealing some exciting plans. And then an interesting thing happened over the ensuing 10 days, namely, uh, the bullishness turned quite bearish. You been watching it, you see the news yourself, you look at tmc.edu, you see the precipitous soaring numbers of the COVID virus. Um, and you even registered that in your surveying. We saw an interesting thing, the surveys that were taken on day one uh, were much more bullish than by the end in day 10. The, the, the optimism was subsiding and you were registering much more caution. I don't know if I'm quite ready to come back to church and these sorts of things. So uh, that will sort of frame the discussion. Now, let me, um, let me tell you um, a couple of things. Your perception is accurate. You know that I'm on the board of the hospital at Methodist Willowbrook, so I'm, I get information every day. And our CEO of the whole system, Dr. Boom, said, if you're still thinking the happy thoughts of May and reopening, uh, that has changed. You need to go back to April mindset when we were at the height of the curve because we're now at a curve that is twice uh, that size. This is not going the right direction. Does that mean we wanna close down? Does that mean we wanna quarantine and shut everything in? No, we need to stay open. We need the economy to be open. So I'm gonna give you some practical, implementable ways that I believe we can help that to happen. But let me tell you about the survey, just so you'll know what you said, keeping in mind that there was a moving target, that, that the data was shifting on us, but we've just aggregated it all nonetheless. 39% um, of you said, we're ready to reopen as soon as possible. 41% of you, that would be what two out of five, say that you are high risk or vulnerable or you live with someone who is high risk or vulnerable. A um, uh, little more than half said, we'll wait until you really have the, uh, the full on kids ministry. That really we wanna see come back before. 28% um, of you said we're ready to volunteer, but 68% of you said not so sure that we want to volunteer. Um, we had the practical, uh, predictable uh, results on the, the hygiene. You know, please, 84% of you said constantly be cleaning high touched areas, keep the sanitizer everywhere, propping doors open, staff and volunteers wearing face masks and all. Speaking of face masks, 81% of you say that you wear masks uh, yourself and that you will wear one happily at church. 83% um, said, uh, I want other people to wear masks. <laughs> so 2% of you, I don't wanna do it, but I want you to do it because I know it helps me stay Healthier. I'll share just a uh, parenthetical comment about that. Dr. Boom was speaking a little bit about the mask situation the other day on a, on a Zoom call that I was uh, listening to. And he was talking about, here, here's the sad reality about COVID. It is a mysterious virus. They are working day and night tirelessly trying to figure out why is this so unpredictable? And why does one person get it and the person who sits right next to him or her, they don't get it. We have a, one of our leaders at the church was telling me last night, uh, one of my employees is going to die of COVID. Uh, he's been on the ventilator for weeks and, and it's just not looking good, barring a miracle. Um, but his daughter uh, would be with him every day, driving to the same workplace for an hour each way. And she's fine. 
And why is this? Well, the best that they can figure out is that it is transmitted from the sprinkling of droplets that are coming from our bodies. And <clears throat> so what is the uh, correction to that, the preventative to that? It's the masks. We gotta, we gotta have those on. How long will we have to wear the masks? Well, I mean, realistically, they're very optimistic about the, the vaccine. Even yesterday, I, I heard Dr. Boom say, we, you know, with Operation uh, Warp Speed uh, that the president has outlined, they are, the government is pouring money into, I think it is seven or eight different uh, companies that are all, I mean, they're building huge plants where they're going to produce these vaccines and they know that many of those seven or eight different variations are gonna fail. And therefore, the, all the square footage, hundreds of thousands of square footage that the government is building to mass produce these vaccines fast, failure means empty building. They won't be able to move forward. Failure, failure. But they're, they, they have optimism, cautious, cautious optimism, that one or two, maybe three, will get it right. And, but that's not going to happen realistically for common people uh, until 2021. They do believe that some in the medical field would be uh, taking vaccines by this fall. But that's hundreds of thousands, not millions. And we have, what, 330 million Americans. Um, and then, of course, you have billions before worldwide travel is really going to be safe to, to resume. And so we're talking about a marathon. I think of that sermon Ben did for us some weeks ago uh, saying this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. Well, his words were prescient. It is a marathon. And so uh, what does that mean? Well, I, I would say it probably means we're going to be wearing our masks at Thanksgiving. We're going to be wearing our masks at Christmas. We're going to be wearing our masks at Valentine's. Maybe somewhere around there uh, we can start to, to get the vaccines and taking off our masks. I think we should be really, really, really praying for the scientific and medical community that are working uh, just tirelessly on that uh, possibility. So, in the meanwhile, what does that mean for us, for the church? Well, uh, aggregating the reality of where we are in Houston, which is not good. We're at one of the highest places in the nation and uh, people are still, for some reason, not taking it seriously. That's no big deal. No, 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 it's, the, it's a real big deal. I mean, you got people in our church who have had it. Uh, and the situation I was just describing, there's a person who's going to die from it. And so it's getting closer to home. I have heard any number of cases right here in my neighborhood. Uh, primarily, uh, they believe, with the children playing all the sports again, is where the pass is happening. And though the children will be fine, uh, by and large, they'll shake it off in a few days or a week. They become petri dishes and they're passing it. And that's the problem. And so, uh, well, what does that mean for the church? Hopefully, as we take it more seriously, as we do our part, uh, to self-mitigate or to do what they're calling voluntary mitigation, because we don't want to lock down, we don't want to shut down, we don't want to close down, we need the economy to go. But as we'll just do the right thing, uh, we're going to hold out cautious optimism for Faith Bridge that we could begin uh, bringing in some people to the building and start moving towards August openings. We'll stay with the timeline that I've outlined before. Um, we're sort of building up with our staff uh, and then adding in some volunteers and then adding in the children and the, the whole thing by maybe August 16th, August 23rd, um, where we typically have back to school Sunday. Um, that's what the goal is. Uh, so much will be determined by you and me, not by our desires, certainly not by our denial, but by our proactive steps, if the whole community will take steps to do the right thing, we believe 
uh, that we can keep everything open, even churches. People will start to come back into churches because they know I'll be safe. Everybody will have a mask on. Everybody's taking it seriously. I'm not going to put myself in jeopardy uh, if I go. <clears throat> and uh, we'll move forward and, and we'll make great uh, progress. So what are the most practical steps that we can take? Well, the most practical of all is that we wear our masks. Dr. Boone was telling us in a call yesterday, he said, now I understand your people, he was talking to a bunch of pastors. He said, I understand your people don't like them. They're uncomfortable. They make you feel claustrophobic. They're warm in the summer. Yes, he says, but if they didn't do anything, you wouldn't see them at hospitals. And when you were getting ready to be put under anesthesia for your surgery, uh, doctors that you looked up at who are getting ready to cut on you wouldn't have them on. They're required because they do work. They cut the spread of droplets. And so we know, of course, that they work. A hundred percent of you know that. That's just common sense and, and logic, even just applying the, the illustrations that, that I gave to you. And so uh, let us not uh, slip into this political tug of war that I see going on, particularly those of us who are Christians, particularly those of us who have subjugated all things political, all political parties, all presidents, all governors, all mayors, all uh, you know, uh, judges and all. We, we subjugate that to Jesus because as followers of our Lord Jesus, we serve and follow Jesus who said, take up your cross and follow, i.e. make some sacrifice. Why? For the kingdom, because you are serving not other people, but you're serving God, Colossians 3.23. And so let's take up our crosses. He also says, uh, no greater love has uh, no one seen than that a person lay down his life for his friend. Let's lay down our pride and our muscle flexing and our eye rolling. Let's lay that down. Let's love our neighbors as ourselves. Let's just do the right things so that we can flatten the curve and cut the spread and keep things open. The governor had to slow things down. He didn't want to do that. We don't want to do that. Um, we want to keep moving forward, but it will really, as uh, Dr. Boone was telling us yesterday, it, it's going to uh, really hinge entirely on voluntary mitigation. And if voluntary mitigation won't work, then they'll have to do mandatory mitigation. And uh, but it seems to me we have a distinct advantage as followers of Jesus um, because we're yielded to him and not to talking points. So it just makes sense. We're just like, sure, I can do that for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of not causing anybody to stumble, uh, and for the case of just loving my neighbor as myself. That's my hope and that's my prayer. I'll give you a, a picture that I've carried in my mind since I heard my dad mention it. He told me the story some time ago of when he, he's 83, but when he was a child, he um, w remembers World War II because he was in elementary school. He said, you know, the interesting thing about our country back then is that we all stacked hands. We were all on board doing what it would take to get through the war. And so one of the most practical things he said that they had the children do, every day when we would go to the, to the school, we would walk in and they had these big barrels that they were called foil drops. And you were supposed to never throw your, your, your chewing gum foil uh, away. You were never supposed to throw the foil away that, that the dinner was cooked uh, in the oven with the night before. No, no, you gathered all that up and you, and you brought it and you put it in the foil drops. Why? Because the military needed all that metal. He said, so we just all did that. It just made sense. And you knew if we're gonna get through this, we've, we've gotta just all pitch in. I thought to myself, that's a perfect picture for us. We don't need foil, but we do need everybody just to say, you know what, we're gonna go ahead and, and uh, subjugate all of the cynicism or the eye rolling or whatever. And we're just going to do what we need to do for the sake of other people, for the sake of our nation, for the sake of our world, for the sake of the gospel. Um, 
And so that's the word picture that I wanna to give to you as you uh, move forward and we come particularly into the July 4th weekend, be particularly vigilant about this. The health uh, experts in our city say that will really determine where we go in July. If people could do better uh, than they did, than some did during Memorial Day, we can correct this. If not, it's uh, all bets off uh, and it's gonna be a very rough summer for Houston. So let's do the right thing. All right, thanks Faithbridge for being a great congregation for all that you are doing to serve him uh, daily in your walk. Uh, blessings to you, to your family. Um, have a great week. We'll talk to you down the way.